Hello, my name is Viral Desai. I'm one of the second year cardiology fellows at the Mayo Clinic. I have the distinct pleasure to uh, talk to Dr. Moeller. Uh, he's a professor of medicine at the Otenser University Hospital in Denmark. Uh, hi, Dr. Moeller. Can, can you tell me a little bit about your trial? Yeah, so the Danger Shock trial is a trial of uh, patients with cardiogenic shock and STEMI. We randomized patients when they uh, developed shock to receive an axial flow pump as soon as we diagnosed shock, so it could be before PCI in the cath lab up, up, up to 12 hours mm -hmm. later. And that we compared to standard of care, which was revascularization, inotropes, and if uh, needed, the uh, patients in the control arm could be escalated uh, and put on ECMO or other devices if felt necessary. So it's a study of um, routine, you could say, even though they're very selected, the patients, mm -hmm. uh, uh, imp impeller use compared to uh, a, a strategy when you put the device in when you think it's needed. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Uh, can you give me a little bit of background about why you chose to do this study in the first place? Well, basically, I, I think it's wrong to, to use an expensive device with severe complication without evidence that it's beneficial. Mm -hmm. so, so basically that's why we decided to do the study 10 years or more than 10 years ago. But, but I mean, you would never do that in heart failure, take a drug in without proving uh, e efficacy. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's very important. Thank you so much. Can you so tell me what we found in the study? Yeah, we, we found that uh, we could reduce death from all causes uh, after 180 days with absolute 13% uh, reduction. Numbers needed to treat was eight mm -hmm. to save one, one life. So mm -hmm. a very uh, uh, strong signal. I, and we are, of course, very happy about, about that. But it came with a backside mm -hmm. of uh, more uh, adverse events. Mm -hmm. So we saw more bleeding. We mm -hmm. saw more uh, limb ischemia, mm -hmm. we saw more renal replacement therapy, and we saw more sepsis with mm -hmm. uh, positive blood culture mm -hmm. in, in the uh, in, impeller group. So it comes at a cost, but we, by the end of the day, we saved lives. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's uh, the most important take home message, but also that this device has to be used with care. You cannot just go out and use these results. This is a very selected mm -hmm. population within the, the, mm -hmm. the STEMI population. Mm -hmm. And uh, here it works. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think the, the study is quite strong there, but it mm -hmm. doesn't say anything about other causes. And you cannot e extrapolate in, in this uh, mm -hmm. disease. Yeah, thank you so much. So the, going by that, you were talking about generalizability of this study. Uh, uh, as we saw that the results were a little bit different between male and female participants. Uh, but obviously, the number of female participants are much lesser. Do you think there's any, uh, can you take anything from that? I think you should be very, very cautious uh, when the subgroups are so small, like there was only 21% female, so, so that group is, is very small. There could be an, uh, an association because females are smaller, they have smaller arteries, mm -hmm. uh, they have smaller hearts, so, so, so there could be more uh, suction events in the, the females, uh, and there could be more adverse events. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we will make that uh, uh, sub-study uh, because the group is, I think the group is too small to draw conclusions mm -hmm. uh, out of that. Mm -hmm. But but it is, of course, uh, a signal of uh, uh, that that is striking. Right, right. Uh, going by that, uh, I had I also noticed that there was a difference between patients who got uh, less than one uh, PC, one vessel PCI, or patients who had more than multivessel PCI. How do you how do you uh, you know uh, think that difference yeah. is? I, th I think what was, what we saw was patients with multivessel disease. We didn't do the analysis on the multiple PCIs, but it was multivessel disease, and I think. The signal is that if you have a large area mm -hmm. at risk mm -hmm. during the hyperperfusion, mm -hmm. uh, you have more benefit. 
uh, of the device. It's like the blood pressure. When the blood pressure was very low, you had greater effect. Mm -hmm. So it, it just kind of tells you that if, if your, your heart is really struggling, right. you, you get uh, more effect. Uh, thank you for that. Just uh, uh, one question I had. Do you think after the uh, really positive result of the study, is it still ethical to continue the recover trial? I think the recover trial will be, be changed. I, I know we, for, for our side in Copenhagen that it would be unethical mm -hmm. to randomize patients there. And I think recover four should have another question going into the mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the adverse events. So I, 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 I would struggle uh, randomizing, and I would really struggle uh, to say that there's not no evidence mm -hmm. to support the use. I, that was easy before danger. Mm -hmm. uh, there was more studies showing harm than benefit, but now we have a randomized clinical trial showing benefit, mm -hmm. and uh, so 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 I think recover should be changed. Okay. Uh, one, one, one last question about the, the study design. Uh, I, I also noticed that there was more RRT use in patients who had impeller. Do you mm. think that had any confounding factor in maybe improving outcomes or anything like that? I, 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 that was very surprising to us. And there's a lot of lit literature saying that the impeller protects the kidneys. I think when you get hemolysis, you get kidney failure. Mm -hmm. But there's also survival bias in this because more patients died early yeah. in the uh, standard of care group and they never would Get make high. it to, to, to the renal replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. But but it can't ex explain the whole excess. So, so I think that's uh, one of the keys to improve mm -hmm. uh, uh, the use of the device. And, and it is us in the ICU that, that should uh, be aware of that. And we have to be really cautious about suction. We have to be really uh, cautious about when bleeding starts. So, so I think uh, the ball is uh, on our uh, side of the court, really, in the ICU to improve the, mm -hmm. the outcomes more. Mm -hmm. I, I am so happy to talk to you because this is one of the few trials which uh, randomized trials we have that has shown now for the first time benefits of Impella and it's going to, I think, change the landscape. Uh, what do you think the future directions are in cardiogenic shock, especially? I, I think we need more trials, mm -hmm. and uh, but we need more trials in homogeneous populations mm -hmm. and we have to... Uh, do a lot of teaching in the how, how to use these devices and most importantly not just to start using them right. for for out of hospital cardiac arrest or right. non ischemic uh, cardiogenic shock we should do studies there really mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, like, you know, this was done in an expert uh, center with really expert uh, uh, procedures. Do you think this can be extrapolated to, uh, you know, uh, non uh, tertiary level centers? No, I, I, well, it can if they have experience it, it but it, you, you can't just take this device. It's not, it's not like a balloon pump. It's yeah. hard, hard to make, mess it up with a balloon pump, right. but, but, but you can really do damage with the, uh, with Impella. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Moller, for being with us. Uh, for more videos like this, please follow us uh, on X at Fits on the Go and on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Fits on the Go. Thank you.